Hello explorers and welcome to another video. Today we are going to do a manual install of OpenStack. And this is gonna be a video in multiple parts that I'm gonna publish later on. And I will link to the playlist down below and also to the script I'm using today. And now I have fired up a new service here, so a new machine in my virtual environment that I'm calling OpenStack Compute. So it's gonna be our compute unit. And we're gonna start off like we did with the controller server, installing curl and supplying the password for this one. And curl is used to get the keys and so on so we can set up the, the repositories for installation. So we'll get the key and put that in. And then we will add the Wallaby um, repository here, Bullseye Wallaby back porch, add that. And then we'll configure the dev conf again. So we don't use the dialog, these kind of dialogues. We want a read line instead. So we just have it in the, pro in the prompt and then hi on that. We do a sudo update. So we have the repositories loaded in our apt service. And then we want to install a bunch of things here. First off, we will set up Ceph. So because Ceph will be our back end that we will store all the volumes in and so on. So let's set up Ceph common here. So we have those packages for uh, Rados and RBD and so on. Next up, I will install the packages we will use here. So the Python 3 OpenStack client and we want the Nova Compute unit and then Nova Compute QMU. And because QMU is the hypervisor that we will use in order to run these. And then I want to have the PyMySQL Python 3 library so we can run uh, or get data from our databases. And we want, don't want to set up any databases here for this package. We can set up the RabbitMQ that we have done before. So it, in this case, we will point out the controller nodes IP because there we have the Rabbit and, uh, MQ server. OpenStack is the user. We will add password and no keystone authentication. Uh, my IP in this case is this IP. So it's not 78, it's 79. So it's this new machine it's IP. Put that in here. Region name should be region one. And then we, it will continue installing the packages. So now the software is installed and we can see that we have some issues. We can't really start the Nova compute because we haven't configured it yet, but we will rectify that very soon. So first off, we will add the configuration file for Ceph. And this Ceph configuration file is exactly the same one that we are using on the controller node. So with the same FSID and the same net, the same Ceph um, host is what we set up here and the same client information here for uh, RBD cache and so on, right through f until flush and then RBD current management ops 20. So that is what we are setting up there. And then we need a couple of keys for Cinder. So first we need the Cinder client keyring. We'll add that up here. And we will copy paste in the Cinder uh, file here. And then we will do a sudo. Um, and we will do that later. And after that we need a secret XML file. And it's gonna look a little bit like this. It's gonna be an XML file, secret. Uh, ephemeral no, private no, and then we are using this UUID. And if you remember back from when we installed Cinder, I said that I created a UUID that I will reuse, and here is the reuse of it. So we will reuse that UUID for this specific Cinder key uh, secret. So that is the secret uh, definition file here. Set that in, and it will say that client Cinder is the secret. Uh, we will use for Ceph and I will define that secret in a virtual shell here. So define secret, file the secret XML. So now the secret is created here 
and then we need to set the value of the secret. So again, virtual shell, uh, secret set value, the secret and the specific secret file. And then we will use base64 uh, of the cinder key. So we need to create a cinder key. Um, I skipped that step here. So the cinder key file, client cinder key, will only have the key information. So only the base64 string from the key ring, I will put in here. And if we go back and set this value, again, we see secret, the specific UUID, base64, the client key here from the command line. So we cat that in and then we'll remove these two. And by doing that, we will not send the command line argument in because that's insecure and we have removed these files already. So we are going around the requirement here and we will not save this secret anywhere. So it's a pretty smart way of going through that. Then we want to create two directories, one for the Ceph guest hosts and one for QMU logs. So we create those two and then we will get the libvirt QMU um, user and the libvirt group will be the owners of those directories. And then we need to co uh, configure Nova Compute. So let's go in the, into the Nova Compute here and see that we have virtual type QMU. Important that that is set. Uh, but that's the only thing I want to check in there. Then I want to configure Nova. So the Nova configuration is much larger and is used for both. Uh, so here I want to first off add the VNC enabled false so we can use this uh, web client to uh, open a uh, shell on our machine. Then I want to check the transport URL. Mm, transport URL so we have the rabbit MQ set up correctly. I want to check my IP. So we have configured that correctly to this host, which in my case is 79. And then we want to check the API endpoint here. So this deprecated value here, auth 30 keystone. The, the guide is saying that you should look at that, but as it is deprecated, it's not important. Um, next up, I will set up Spice. And Spice is the web GUI that we will use and I will um, remove the old spice configuration and add my own here and it is different from the uh, controller uh, server so here we will put in this setup which is a little bit interesting so this is the compute node but we are mentioning where the proxy URL is on the controller node so we have an HTML page there we will enable it the key map, I set that to Swedish keyboard. I've not gotten that to work yet. The listen, here we will listen to uh, our local address and the proxy client address will be my IP. So that is the setup for the Spice service. Then of course we need the Keystone Auth token as with all of these services. So let's configure that one. And we will copy in this Keystone authentication here. So again, author URL, mine, uh, mine cache server, mem cache server, auth type password, project and user uh, domain name default, project name service, and username Nova, and then password query. Uh, in the libvirt section here, we want to check for uh, the vert type should be QMU, right? It's set to KVM at the moment, so let's set QMU. We want to check the RBD user, and that is not set at the moment, so I will set the user to Cinder, and then the secret UUID is the same UUID that we have used before. So this is the one that I generated and will use for this purpose. And then we want to check in the VNC block that the VNC client is disabled. So we can use this uh, 
uh, web GUI. So, and now I want to go down to the glance section. So there is a lot of things to look through here. We have a deprecated value here of API service because that will be fetched from the Keystone uh, service instead. So that is something that we don't want to supply. Uh, it also talks in the guide about updating this lock path. I will not do that. I don't see any reason to. And then we have the placement service that we want to add all the information here as well. Similar to the Keystone Auth token, this is also an, a login that is required. So let's put in the login for the placement service, region name, region one, project and a user domain default, project name service, auth password, auth URL, and then we have the username and password. So same with we have there. And we want to check the Cinder configuration so we have the right region for Cinder. So in the Cinder configuration, we go down and look at OS region name and see that we have region one. So now we have all that installed. So now the compute should be configured correctly, but we want some network on this uh, compute service as well. So we will install the Neutron Linux bridge agent uh, because that is what we will use uh, on the server. And we will not set up the database here. We will configure Rabbit again. Let's do that. Uh, open stack and the password, no auth token, and it will install the Linux Bridge package. So now that we have installed the Neutron Linux Bridge, uh, we need to configure it. So we go into the Neutron config here, and in the default, first we want to check for transport URL as usual. See that we have the Rabbit connection correctly set up and the auth strategy should be keystone then we want to go down to the keystone auth token here and see that we put that in correctly so we use the same configuration as we have done multiple times before put that in here so we have the auth url the memcache server auth password project domain name user domain name default default product name service and then the username neutron then we go into the Nova configuration file and here we want to configure Neutron, the Neutron section and as usual. So the auth URL again to Keystone, password type, project and user domain default, region name, region one, project name, service and the Neutron password and uh, username. And we want to create, uh, change the agent configuration, of course. Here we want to uh, look for this uh, physical uh, interface. So the physical interface mapping, again, only have one interface here. So I will set that as a provider. We will go down to VXLAN here, VXLAN, and here we will enable VXLAN, we will set the local IP address, and this local IP address is for this server, so 79, and then I will enable L2 population here, so that is, and we of, of course need to check the security group as well. Uh, that should be a search instead. Security group. Here we want to add the firewall driver for the IP tables firewall driver. And we will enable security group. And because we did that, we need to add this uh, kernel driver net filter and our kernel module and check that we have the IP tables set up correctly. We will, as we did before in the Neutron setup, go into the L3 agent, change the interface driver to Linux bridge. And we will go into the DCP agent, change the interface driver there as well to Linux 
bridge and DHC CP driver demask and isolated metadata should be true. So now we have configured the compute totally. So we will restart Nova Compute and the Linux Bridge agent on this system. And we also want to enable the Nova Compute and the Neutron Linux Bridge agent. So now the compute unit is done, but we want to configure it so it can actually be used on the controller unit. So we will go back to the controller and here we want to list all the Nova Compute services. So OpenStack Compute Service List and then check for Nova Compute and it should show us one compute unit. And just so we have the host in our setup, we will also run this Nova Manage Cell 2 Discover Host verbose. So we will find that host on our system. So it will be connected to our network here. And there it is. So now that we have that set up, we can go back to our web browser here and we can check admin overview and we should be able to see some information here about the network or the uh, setup. Uh, summary, if we'll check hypervisors, there we should be able to see some. Here we only saw the instances over on the overview and we haven't started any instances yet. So here we can see that we have one vCPU uh, available. We have um, used 512 megabytes of the two gigabytes that are available. And we also have local disks about uh, 18 gigabytes that we can use. And this is the OpenStack Nova compute that we have down here. So that is added as one of our compute units, uh, one hypervisor. And in the overview here, in the project instead, there we will see uh, similar data, but it will go from the point of view of the current setup uh, quotas that we have. And here we say that we can have up to 10 new, new, uh, instances and 20 vCPUs and so on, but we don't have that much in our system. So if you don't set your quotas correctly to how much resources you actually have, then you can have a problem here. Um, but it, in my case, I'm just testing, so it's not that important. This was what I wanted to show for you today. I hope that you found this interesting. I hope that you learned something today. If you have an OpenStack uh, implementation running already, leave a comment in the comment section down below and especially if there is a specific service that you feel is more complicated and something that you can't really wrap your head around and you want me to dig deeper into that service then leave a comment about that in the comment section as well if you haven't subscribed yet please do that if you like this video give it a like share it with your friends and colleagues and i really hope to see you in the next video